Um, Rossi, shall we talk about the inevitable praise for the second goal and Brandon Williams generally? Because this seems to be worthy of discussion. Brandon Williams had, by all accounts, a pretty torrid start to his time at town. Got run over by Lewis Sinistero within a minute of coming on against Leeds, put in the spin cycle and then scored no goal within a couple of minutes of his first start. But he's been, he's been getting better and better game by game. And the boys have always been talking about it. You've been talking about it as well. And then he scores an absolute belter in this game. Picks up the ball deep in his own half and basically just, just runs. And he doesn't stop until he scored the other end. What can we say about this? Once again, in real time, like from where I was, it probably wasn't as good until I watched it back. And I've watched yeah. the goal back many times. I mean, I'm sure many town fans have done the same. And it is just an absolute well of a goal. Like Wes Burns gets absolutely elbowed right in the face, pretty much. But then Brandon Williams just does what he does. I think someone posted um, Mauricio Tarico's goal, which was very yeah. similar. Very, yeah. um, uh, you know, from the 90s. But yeah, Brandon Williams, it's just becoming a big fan favourite. Another cult hero at town. You know, it's still early days, of course. He's still got to build up. You know, you've got to, you know, hopefully add to this. You can't just like yeah. have this one goal and that's all you do. But, you know, after that, you know, the chant was, you know, Brandon Williams is a blue and he hates Norwich, um, which is always, always good. Um, but yeah, just he, what a performance, you know, as well. Late on in the game, you know, just basically takes out a player with a tackle, which is great. Yeah. Um, but You're he's right, just... though. He, he's becoming a cult hero, isn't he? He's got that... He, obviously, he's got the, the Norwich issue that he had there and the uh, the old one-finger salute that he put on Instagram towards towards Norwich. Obviously, will endear himself to fans without him even playing. But but he seems to be one hell of a player as well. And Alex, you said he was the best player on the pitch. <laughs> Blimey, Benson. Someone agrees. Benson, um... Benson agrees. I'm going to go on mute. Yeah. Best player on the pitch, comfortably. Um, it was his quality, which I think was something that needed to, to maybe get up to speed. We all know that he's had it. We've all seen the highlight reels. We've all seen uh, how he's defended in some of those big games. We've even seen that goal against Sheffield United that he scored. I think that the one thing that we haven't been able to question at all was kind of the passion that he brings. Uh, he is big on his passion in a kind of a Harry Clark fist bump in front of uh, the Bobby Robson stand style um aside from the goal you look at some of the tackles he went in with there was a really late one that uh not late sorry not a late tackle but late on in the game where he flew in got the ball it's a real cruncher and it was a moment where i think things were kind of really started to fire up after the uh the fourth goal he just brings so much to like and he's developed a lot as a player as well you look at the youngsters that mckenna's had to work with and you really start to notice how how um, they're really just developing. We've spoken about Amari Hutchinson in that way, how how he's become a more all-round player. Brandon Williams is someone who's come up and said, I love defending, I'm a defensive fullback. And you're seeing him run the length of the pitch and bombing down the, the right side. He, I think, could easily kind of do the Leaf Davis role on the left. He's really giving Harry Clark a lot of competition on the right. There's just so much to like about him. 